This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. I am Pastor Carl, and no matter whom you are on life's journey, we thank you so much for viewing this recording this day. We pray that your hearts will be open to receive that which God will have for you to hear this day. We pray that you will allow our God to continue to meet all of your needs because our God loves you so much. So we thank you very much for viewing this recording this day. Before we continue, my wife Belinda will come forth to read the scripture for our sermon this day, and then we will continue. Good morning. Our scripture reading will be coming from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 7 through 17. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. Hathach went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hadach and gave him a message from Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone may the person live. I myself have not been called to come into the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, but you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this, then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also do, I and my maids will also do fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. The word of the Lord. Our God, we thank you for the hearing of your word, that your word will fall upon the good ground, the good soil of our hearts. Therein, allow your word to grow within us 30, 60, 100 fold. These things we ask in the name of King Yahshua Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> the sermon today is Use Your Head and Test Your Feelings. Esther's 4. 7 through 17. Back to school time is a time that parents lay down the law. As all the kids go back to school, moms and dads are busying themselves, laying the groundwork to help the children have a successful year in school. Little ones get instructions regarding how to cross the street holding hands and how to go about to eat their lunch. Middle school kids get cautionary tales about bullying behaviors, harder work, and budgeting their time. High school students get lectures on safe driving, curfews, and the looming threat and promise of college, which means buck down, buckle down now. Many college students, for the first time in their lives, are living independent of their family's oversight. Yet for the first time in a century, there is another back-to-school problem that is hindering us and lingering over this world at this time is a great and serious concern. It's about keeping our distance, masking up, and washing our hands. On top of this, as the temperatures begin to cool down, the red storm clouds of the seasonal occurrence of flus are about to heat up, which is going to contribute additional concerns and stress to an already stressful world. And this is why I believe that we must help our children to understand that they must use their heads as they trust their feelings. From our reading today, our hero Esther 
the Queen of Persia was a Jewish girl hidden in the identity of an orphan who was being raised by her uncle Mordecai. She became queen by winning the Miss Persia contest, and the only person to judge in this event was King Xerxes himself. Now, every good story needs to have a villain, and the villain of this story is a man named Haman. Haman could not stand the fact that Mordecai refused to bow down and to give him the respect that he felt was due him. Now, Haman being driven by hate, with bitterness in his heart, along with his tremendous power and all of his money, he sets in motion something that was going to make sure that every single Jew under King Yerxes' control would be killed and eliminated. And this is when Esther comes into the play. If Esther does not use her head and test her feelings by entering the king's court without his permission, it would become a matter of sure death for her, as we just read in our scripture. Yet it is she alone who has the power and the ability to disrupt the evil plans of Haman. Our sermon today picks up where Esther's uncle Mordecai admonishes her to use her head and test her feelings by saying the following in Esther 4 and 14. And if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? I've opted to use the language of the New King James Version instead of ours because it more accurately describes the fact of the position that Esther is in. To be clear, Esther was the queen of Persia in the royal kingdom of Xerxes, to be precise, which is why I wanted to make sure we fully grasp that. And this is the point that I'm trying to make, that there are no excuses, there are no mistakes with God. We all are born for a reason and for a purpose and for a time according to the good place where God desires to put us into this time continuum. And this is why I say that we must understand what Esther is going through and what we Living today must understand what we're going through. Again, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Our denomination prays weekly the Lord's Prayer. And part of it goes, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if we mean this prayer, how should we respond? As I often tell people, if our Heavenly Father wanted you to be with him as you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the first thing that would have happened once you accepted Jesus Christ is that you would immediately have died and you would immediately have gone to heaven. But this is not what this is all about. Dying would have made this prayer incomplete, for this prayer is determined by the fact that we are here on earth. And whether you realize it or not, we are here on this earth at this time, at this place, during this time, for a reason. God has us here for a purpose according to God's glory. And this is why we must use our heads and test our feelings. Because there is no substitute for not doing the things that God would have us to do. This is the test that we must always understand that is before us. And if we do not understand this, this is where and how we get into trouble. Not understanding the fact of what we are here to do, why we're here to do, but more importantly, what God will have us to do while we are in fact here. I am told that the Chinese character for crises are two. One meaning danger and the other means opportunity. While life threatens us with dangers, it also affords us with the opportunities to do things that we never would have or could have done if we would take the time to do things that way. So I will say honestly, yes, this pandemic is hindering us from doing all the things that we desire to do right now. But you are alive. 
And that's why you must test your feelings and use your head. God can help you make up any ground that you are losing right now. Anything that you believe that you are losing because you are doing the right thing, I want you to trust God in the process because God can help you make up the ground. That's why you must use your head and test your feelings because you have to understand that our God is a God of second chances. There is nothing that is passing you by right now that God cannot give you the power and the ability to make up from some other points into your future. But use your head and test your feelings. That way we don't have to fall into the traps of possibly dying unnecessarily. Scott Walker writing in the publication Daily Guidepost, tells about his friend named Eddie Dwyer. Eddie Dwyer died in 2006 at the age of 92. Scott Walker participated at Eddie's funeral. Walker says that Eddie Dwyer, when he was in the eighth grade, his teacher assigned them a class term paper, saying that she would not accept late papers, and if they were late, she would not grade them, and they would, in fact, fail the course. Well, <clears throat> Eddie caught the flu for three weeks, was not able to complete the paper, and the teacher refused to give him a second chance. Angry and frustrated, Eddie emptied out his desk, packed his books, and dropped out of school. And for the next three years, he picked cotton and worked odd jobs in the midst of the Great Depression. One day, a businessman approached Eddie on the street and says, Eddie, I've been watching you. You are a hard worker, and I know that you have a whole lot of promise. I'll give you a challenge. If you decide to go back to school, I will pay for all of your books. You see, just because life threw Eddie a curveball and would have counted him out in most circumstances, he did not give up on himself. Despite being 17 years old in the eighth grade, Graduating from high school at the age of 21, Eddie's life made a difference. And the difference is this. Eddie eventually became a professor of New Testament theology at Baylor University. We are told that his students loved him. Eddie was a professor there for nearly 40 years. How many lives did Eddie touch? But being a professor... Despite the fact of how his life started, how God allowed him to catch up, despite all the things that were going on in his life to throw him a curveball. And this is why I'm trying to talk to the students today and for others that are hearing me. Yes, this pandemic does have you sidetracked, and it makes you think that you're being robbed of your future and that there is nothing left for you to do because right now everything is before you and you can't see a possibility of things getting better. But I want you to know, I want you to understand that God can help you make up the ground that you are losing today. God can help you to get back on track but you must use your heads and test your feelings right now. You do not want to put yourselves in harm's way or in a position that is going to endanger you that you will not be able to receive and to maintain or to live the full potential that God will have for you. I plead with you to hear what I'm saying to you right now. Understand the fact that you can have a life without limits, but right now you must be wise. You must do the right thing right now and be safe and get past this and then allow God to help you to make up the ground that you appear to be losing right now. I can tell you that God can do this if you would trust him. For every student that's listening to me, I want you to repeat with me the words of clergyman Edward Everett Hale. And it says, I am only one, but still I am one. I can't do everything, but still I can do something. Because I can't do everything, I will not refuse to do something I can do. Poet John Greenleaf Witter wrote, For all sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest are these it might have been. 
Students and all who are listening to me today, I don't want your lives to be a might have been. This is why you must use your head and test your feelings, for you do not want to endanger yourself by giving way to feelings because you refuse to use your head and ultimately can lead to your demise. I pray that you will allow God to help you even as you are challenged by the things that you're going through today. Our God loves you. God wants you to succeed, and you're going to be all right. Grace and peace. Amen.